in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Facebook, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and I just added uh, WACPTV.ing.com. Howdy, everybody out there in WACP TV uh, dot ing dot com. Uh, I believe WACP stands for We Are Creative People. We are coming together to create for those who are the descendants of slaves born in America. We need everybody that we can to help these who are so lost, made deaf, dumb, and blind. I am known on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm, Angel Snub Number 7. I'm your brother and hopefully your friend Tali, even wrong. I want to make a very serious attempt to keep this particular uh, video under an hour. I just wanted to put my little two cents in upon uh, certain topics that's in the news, but the main uh, subject that I would like to expound on the subject matter or the topic is this thing about white guilt. White guilt does not and have never existed. It is of course more deceit. It is more deception by the racist pink people. And we're going to talk about that towards the end of our conversation. Like I said, there are several other little uh, tidbits I would like to uh, just speak upon before I get down to the real nitty gritty, y'all. <laughs> oh, 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 man, I'm so tongue tied. I haven't made a video in a while, so I get tongue tied. But I would like to tell you also that it is always an honor to come before you because you could be doing something else. There has been a conspiracy to keep this voice off YouTube. And I believe, I don't know, so I'm going to say I believe, because I don't have real proof. I have circumstantial evidence. But you can see clearly that having now 60 channels, 60, that's 5 plus 1 and a big zero behind it, 60 channels of this ministry has been terminated today. Here I am. Here we are living in the United States of America or the United Snakes of America and these liars tell you that you have the right to express yourself, the right of freedom of speech, but yet they attack you for speaking your mind and they justify it by calling your speech hate speech but since they are not asked to prove hate speech it is easy to false flag and condemn somebody when you don't have to prove anything 
There is nothing hateful about the realities temple on earth because the realities temple on earth represents freedom, justice, and equality, peace and love to every human being on this planet, regardless of color, in respect to animal life and respect to the planet itself. How is that hateful? What they call hateful is because I am bold enough and I will point to and direct to those and describe those who are the troublemakers. If the troublemakers are black, then I will call them that. If the troublemakers are pink, then I call them that. Whatever the troublemaker is, I call them that. The troublemakers do not like them being called out because the troublemakers try to paint themselves as angels and they are not angels. They are hell raisers. And they continue to prove they are hell raisers just the fact that they come after me 60 channels. Some of these channels were on private. So I know that YouTube itself is involved in the conspiracy to silence my voice. But what makes me so special? Why is there so much time and effort to try to silence the realities temple on earth internet ministry? So much time and effort to silence Angel Snup Nup 7. Why is that? Because when you live in a world of wickedness, in a world of deception and lies, they don't like it. Those who live in fantasy don't like somebody bringing reality. And so many of you live in La La Land. Y'all live in delusional worlds. Fake worlds. And some of y'all are hypocrites and you fake and you don't like somebody to point your hypocrisy out. You are fraud. How fake you are. How deceitful you are. A liar and a fraud. You don't want somebody pointing those things out. Because when you have been exposed for what you really are, and your game is busted, you have nowhere else to go. And you wonder if there's going to be retaliation. And so the racist pink people of America and around the earth don't want somebody reminding us of their evil, their wickedness, both past and present, because they fear retaliation, not only from those, those of whom have become their victim, but from other pink people who did not know just how corrupt their brothers and sisters really were, have been, and still are. Very deceitful, very slick. So please let us shut up, Angel Snuffed Up 7. Let us shut up all those who are telling truth. But I'm the only one that's telling the real truth. Bring it all out. Exposing it all. Because you need and I need, we all need to accept our reality. We need to get out of these fictional, fake type worlds that we live in. This is the result of it. Do you like the world that you're living in? The world that religion has made? The world that corrupt political government has made? These educational systems? These, these, the, the influence of media? Do you like this? Do you love this? Because if you love it, then why do you pray to go to heaven? Why do you pray to see the hereafter? Because something here is wrong. But see, you don't have to go to heaven. You can make heaven right here on this planet. You don't have to wait for the hereafter. The hereafter can be right here on this planet. Hereafter, you get rid of evil. But evil exists because good people do nothing. And that's because good people are good for nothing. They are scared and afraid and sit back and let wicked people do anything that they want to do. I'd rather be rotten in the grave, stanking in the cemetery, than do nothing at all, at least raise my voice up and point in the direction of the hellraiser and the troublemakers, the liars and the deceivers, the hypocrites and the frauds. So I thank you so much. 
And you must be special too in order for you to continue to support this ministry on this particular forum or wherever I go. You want to hear this truth. You want to hear this voice. Because I will also tell you if I thought that nobody wanted to listen to Angel Snuffin' Up 7, then I would shut up. There would be no need. It would be senseless. Why should I talk and nobody's interested? But as long as there are just a few interested, because even in scriptures, it says that 144,000 would be saved. There are millions of people on this planet. Why would the scriptures only talk about the saving of 144,000? It is because so many of us are trapped and we have grown and become grown in lust and love for evil. We have become evil and unrighteous. We want to, what's that old saying? Bake the cake and eat it too or have your cake and eat it and ice cream too. How, I forgot how that saying go. You want, you want to be good, but you want evil also. You fall in love with a filthy, nasty, vile, profane, wicked world. I don't want nothing to do with this world. I don't care about their Xbox. I don't care about the rims on their car. I don't care about their pornography. I don't care nothing about their drugs. I don't care nothing about their big shot movies. I don't care nothing about anything of this world at all. It should all be destroyed. And those with a righteous nature bring in a righteous and a pure, a true freedom, a, a, a society that expresses free True freedom, justice, and equality regardless of race. Regardless of gender. And even, and even uh, sexual orientation for the time being. Because we know what the deal is. But you are a human being and you should still be treated like a human being. Because all of us, it says in biblical teachings, all of us have fallen short the grace of God. All of us is messed up. So why don't we come together and clean up? But you don't want to clean up because you like that mud on your body. You like swine laying in mud and your own filth. And some of y'all like that. You look clean, but your mind is dirty and violent and profane nasty that's why my voice have to be made solid because I'm as real as you're gonna get we have to deal with things exactly how they are and stop living and trying to make something that is not in the society this is no love everybody society y'all don't love everybody you're filled with hatred. You're vile. This one think they better than that one because I got some money. Or because my face is prettier than yours. I'm taller than you are. Whatever the reason is. We live in a world of sickness. But the doctor has arrived. And everybody ain't happy to see a doctor because some of y'all, some folks, don't want to be told that they are sick. <laughs> Woo! Man, that's enough of that. Let me let me quickly get to my featured topic. The featured topic there is no such thing as white guilt. But before we get to that, I want to speak on this black woman who claims she is of black conscience, but she expresses herself by looking like and mimicking pink women. <laughs> how are you going to come to me and tell me how black you are or African you are 
with a blonde wig on your head. Oh, I'm a black. Now, when you talk to this sister, she talks beautiful African words, you know, in an African type way, Afrocentric, however y'all want to say it. But as we all know, Afro, African, Afrocentric, black, Negro, color, all that comes up out of pink supremacy. Formerly known as white supremacy. I'm not going to say white anymore. I'm going to say Caucasian or I'm going to say pink. Because white in the English language means holy. Means pure. Means clean. Means unadulterated. And we know that these people that we call white people are not clean. They are not holy. They are not righteous. So I'm not going to give them that privilege, that honor of being called white. No, you are pink or you are Caucasian. And for the purpose of this video, we're going to call you pink. But it is done in a respectful manner because you are not white. You are pink. Or if there is some other type of word that you would like, you also go by Caucasian. But pink is not disrespectful because a lot of y'all look pink, red looking type folks. Pinkish. The Native American people called you pale face. But you definitely are not white. I'm not going to give you that one. No, no, no. <laughs> not, not here. So you might as well flag the video because I'm not going to do that. And like I say, black and African, Afrocentric, all that stuff comes up out of pink supremacy. So brothers and sisters, we are not that. But because we are so divided, we don't know what we are. So until the time arrives where we as a people who have finally matured, and you can come together and come up with a description of who we are today. You are not a Kemet. Those people don't exist no more. You are not a Moor. They don't exist no more. You're not a Hebrew Israelite. You never met them before. You and I, we are brand new people, raised and born in America, and you should be proud of who you are. You don't have to live off somebody else's accomplishments in order to feel good about yourself. That's because you really don't know your history. You really don't know who you are. And maybe if you started, stop tripping and accomplish some things in 2012, you'll stop tripping on what some, what some Egyptians did or what the Moors did, and then, you, and then you'll be proud of what you did. But since you're not doing anything, you're not accomplishing anything, then you got to brag about what somebody else did a thousand years ago, and you're out tripping. But then, like I said, you don't even really know your own history right here in America because it is so worthy of being proud. But like I say, this particular woman wants me to treat her and view her as a black woman. We're going to just use that, that, that description. But she has a white woman wig on her head and she looks like a... With all due respect, you look like a clown with all that makeup on, looking like a white woman. I'm just being myself, she said. How are you being yourself looking like a white woman? A dark-skinned white woman. That's what you look like. And if a white woman puts stuff in her lips, gets a tan, and put an afro on her head or whatever, they will say she's trying to look like a black woman. It is the same, so vice versa. So how can you tell me that you are this black woman? Now, you talk Afrocentric. You talk like you know or trying to learn your ancestors' past history. But at the same time, you say, I am who I am. Wearing a white, a white woman's the blonde weave on your head. And the pink makeup on your lips and all that looking like a pink woman. 
how can you expect me to acknowledge you as as that? I see you as somebody that, that is still sick. Now check this out. I'm expressing myself. I am who I am. Okay, you are who you are. But if you notice, all these black women that claim, oh, I'm just being who I am. Why do you choose the Caucasian or the pink woman to look like with the blonde hair and acting and behaving like the blonde, like the pink woman? You never see these black women try to act Chinese. You never see them try to act like a Native American woman or an Indian woman or an Asian woman from the Philippines or anything. It's always a Caucasian person. You know why? Because your mind has become Europeanized. Because the reality is, even though you might holler black power, you might talk about black this and black that, you really are nothing but a dark-skinned pink person. And that's what you express yourself. And they don't like somebody to tell them that I am who I am. No, you are still a good slave. Yes, yes, you are who you are, a good slave. So you need to go somewhere else where somebody else will entertain your foolishness because that's not going to happen here. If you're going to be a black person, if you want to try to be or try to learn who you are, we know that's not who you are. You're not trying to be somebody that live in Nigeria or come out of the Sudan or Kenya or some African nation. You're trying to be white. Come on now. Get out, get out of here with that madness to me. Take that on somewhere else. Unsubscribe. Get off my page with that foolishness. Looking so stupid. Black as hell with blonde hair. And I want to say this to you. Black people produce all the colors of the rainbow. You might not know it or not, but there are black people who have naturally blonde hair, natural thin lips, natural thin noses. Wherever, whatever trait you see in other so-called races of people, you will find it in black folks somewhere. But you're not trying to be like them. In fact, you don't know nothing about them. You're trying to be like those who conquered your ancestors because they turn you Christian. They turn you into a dark-skinned version of them. And that's the reality of it. That's the truth of it. But y'all can't handle the truth. You don't like the truth. Y'all like looking crazy and stupid. It's just like if a cat was raised by dogs and being a dog is all the cat knows so the dogs start barking woof 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 and here's this cat ruff, ruff. the cat is doing all it can to bark like a dog but it's a cat it's acting and behaving like dogs because dog is all that it knew it was raised by dogs so here you are even though you talk about black power Black conscious, you have no choice, and we have no choice but to express ourselves as pink people, and that's what this person is demonstrating that they have a Europeanized mind, they're making no real attempt to try to be or try to find who they are, and I understand why that's messed up because. It is too much confusion. We as a people have not come together in order to decide exactly who and what we are. If we want to be Moors, let's be Moors. If we want to be Hebrew Israelites, let us be Hebrew Israelites. But, or, or if we want to be Muslims, let us be Muslims. But whatever we decide we want to be, let us be that. It's too much confusion. So this sister is part of the confusion. And one thing for sure, she's not a Hebrew Israelite. She's not, she's not of the black Muslims. She's not a black Moor. She's not nothing. She's a white woman with dark skin. <laughs> That's the bottom line with that. <laughs> Moving on.
<laughs> I was watching one of my favorite little cartoons called Family Guy. When I was a younger person, I wanted to be a cartoon artist. I, I've always liked superheroes. I've always liked animation cartoons. And uh, I like and I rather enjoy this uh, cartoon called Family Guy. And see, the thing about Family Guy is that they make you laugh and they do certain things and tell uh, different stories and they, they talk about certain topics on Family Guy and they try to make it funny but they know what those people, the writers of Family Guy know the reality and they know what's happening. And see, when it comes to telling the truth, I don't care where that truth comes from. It can come from somebody with a black face. It can come from somebody with a pink face or a brown face. It makes no difference. I love hearing the truth. But see, most times when you do it, when you tell the truth in a comedy type way, it either flies over people's head or they don't take you serious. Now, in this particular episode of Family Guy, I believe it was Peter, Quagmire, and that Jewish, the guy that, that uh, runs that Jewish pharmacy. The Jewish, the Jewish pharmacy, what's the name of that guy? Uh, I forgot what his name was. Anyway, he's the Jewish, he runs that Jewish pharmacy on Family Guy. The Jewish pharmacy was not doing good. And Peter and Quagmire, along with the, what is that guy's name? <laughs> uh, anyway, they tried, to, they tried to increase the sales of the pharmacy. Nothing would work. So they came up with a plan to torture, commit arson. And then, of course, a very close friend of theirs was Joe. Joe is the police officer. And Joe, Joe found out, due to his instincts and detective work, that they torched this uh, pharmacy. So, Peter and Quagmire and the guy that, that owns the Jewish pharmacy, they end up in jail. And after this story about how insurance companies get over, y'all understand, see, family guy understands insurance companies are robbers. And so really they're just telling you how to get back at the insurance company. So due to the fact that the insurance company would rather Joe B. in a wheelchair when they could have paid for this uh, procedure that probably could have saved him and saved his legs and they got over he decided to let Peter and Quagmire and the Jewish guy out of jail that was that was in that arson charge now later on Chris the son asked uh, the father Peter he said hey he said, uh, hey, Dad, if you commit a crime like arson, don't you supposed to pay, you know, have some kind of punishment? You don't you supposed to, don't you supposed to go to jail? And Peter, now that's the kicker. And Peter said, Peter said, no, not if you're white. <laughs> I'm like, what? See, they said it in a joking manner. But see, that's, that's, that's what they call it. That's a rule, that's a law, that's a policy that's unsaid. You don't just send white folks to jail like that. You just don't punish white people. And see, they know that, and they put it in this little cartoon. Some people will laugh about it or whatever, but that's how it is. Do you really think that black folks is criminal or, or Hispanic people, they just so, just, just criminals, criminals by nature, and they fuck the prisons and the mental institutions and the jails. You think that's the reason why? It is because that's how they have it set up. You don't do cocaine. Of course, a certain amount of them is going to end up in jail or prison because we all know they do commit crime. 
But we're not going to punish them like that. We're going to pat each other on the shoulder whenever we get a chance. That's how they have it set up. And now I got or have about 25 minutes. I want to try to get quickly, go quickly into my main uh, topic that I would like to speak on. And that is, there's no such thing as white guilt. And I'm going to start off that topic by talking about the uh, uh, Senate candidate in Missouri. I think he's the Republican Senate candidate in Missouri, Todd Aiken. Now, Todd Aiken, many people got angry and upset with Todd Aiken because he said that there was such thing as legitimate rape where a woman can get raped and if the rape <laughs> I feel dumb saying it myself and if the rape is legitimate then the woman's body can stop her from getting pregnant by the rape <laughs> I mean I, I feel stupid just repeating that I just don't legitimate rape in order to, for it to be a legitimate rape, that means it is legal under some law or policy. <laughs> what, is you, what are you talking about? But see, that's how a lot of y'all on YouTube sound. That's why many of you get angry at me because I cannot leave myself out without really thinking about what I say. And so you don't know how to attack me. But when you talk like Todd Aiken, I mean, it, 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 it really has him in deep trouble. Very stupid comment, but I don't understand why so many persons get upset because if you were on YouTube and read all these stupid comments or, or watch some of these dumb, dumb uh, videos, I don't see what make, I don't see why you would get upset with Todd Aiken because he's just an idiot just like so many other folks out here. Oh, he disrespected women. Oh, the legitimate rape and all like that. Okay, now. You upset with Todd Akins. Okay. Now, Todd Aiken offered an apology. Todd Aiken tried to show remorse. Not because he committed a crime, but he said something ignorant. Not because what he said caused somebody harm. No, because Todd Aiken is an ignorant man. Okay, he admitted he, he makes the apology. But see, now look, look at this. Oh, wow. See, this continues to show the hypocrisy and the fraud of the racist pink people because they, many of them, including people in his own party, do not want to accept his apology. What is the problem with that? The problem with that is that these same racist pink people would turn around and tell black folks, oh, that's slavery. That was a long time ago. And black folks is supposed to forgive and forget. It's always, when it comes to black folks, whenever we get hurt, whenever somebody do something to us, oh, forgive and forget. But when something affects them, when somebody hurts them, disrespects them, it's all at war. I don't, I don't accept your apology, Todd Aiken. That goes to continue to show the hypocrisy and the fraud of racist pink people, and y'all love them. You know why y'all love racist pink people, including some of y'all other so-called good pink people, because they know how to smile. They know how to deceive real good, and y'all fall for it because they know how to smile. They know how to lie their way out of things. But look at their actions. Why can't you leave this man alone? The man said something ignorant. That's all. Nobody, nobody got physically hurt. It was just an ignorant statement. People make ignorant statements and believe dumb things every day. Just religion in itself. Religion teaches against homosexual behavior. So I guess y'all hate all those who, who are taught that homosexuality
penalty is a sin. And don't forgive them. That's their belief. That's what this man believed in. But it didn't cause nobody harm. But y'all discriminate against homosexuals. You kill homosexuals and all these different things. But this man just put out words and you can't forgive him. There is no such thing as white guilt. White guilt equals an apology. Can you please direct me and show me the official apology of the United States of America? Show me the official apology where this nation put it in writing and it was approved by Congress and the president that this nation apologized for the terrorism of black people for over 300 some years. Now, once you give an apology of which Todd Aiken did do, then you must show remorse. Now, I don't know whether Todd Aiken's apology was sincere, but he made a, an apology to, shot, to, to try to show remorse for speaking in ignorance. Now, you show me and direct me to the actions of racist pink people in this nation. Show me signs of remorse. Show it to me. They said welfare is remorse. Welfare was, was created for pink, pink women. That's who that was created for. Had nothing to do with black folks. Affirmative action. Pink, white, pink women and other people that's coming off, that's coming to America today, they benefit from affirmative action more than black folks. There ain't nothing special about affirmative action. In fact, if you read it nowadays, it would tell you it has nothing to do with black folks. There's nothing remorseful that I've seen and I've experienced and I've been living in America for almost a half a century. And I have yet to see sincere remorse. Oh, remorse is you can marry a pink woman. You can marry a pink man. You can have your own TV show and call it Oprah. Or you can have the Cosby show. Or you can play basketball and or rap for a few million dollars. That's showing remorse. Who is making the money out of all this? Show me the remorse when you look at the black community and the black community does not show that it is the producer of people who can be successful. And since there is no remorse, then once you show remorse, you can't just run your mouth. You have to offer an apology. You have to show sincere remorse. And you do this by the process of rehabilitation. In other words, by attempting to heal the injury that you cause. Just like if a man slap a woman. Pow! Oh! What you did to me for? If the man is serious, he really means I did not hurt you. He will buy the woman flowers. He will uh, do whatever he can in action to show I really didn't mean to hit you. I really apologize. I'll pay your hospital bill from slapping you, whatever. There must be action activity to show that I'm trying to heal the injury that I caused. Now, the only way that the racist pink people can show true apology, true remorse, is through rehab. That means, since you know that the descendants of slaves born in America, we are not and did not come from Europe. That we are the descendants of those of whom you call African. Then you should take it upon yourself to go to the records and try to teach these black people who they really are. That's what you need to do. But see, you like them to be dark-skinned versions of you. Just like that woman I was telling you about Earlier in this conversation, she's nothing but a dark-skinned white woman. So that 
That makes the racist pink people even more angry at Angel Snub Nub 7 because Angel Snub Nub 7 do not want to be a dark skinned pink man. They don't want that because as long as you think like them and act like them, they don't owe you nothing. You're part of them and you're not. So here we are looking so stupid, black man. We are so stupid looking, black woman, trying to behave and act like them. Just like a cat raised by dogs and the dogs bark. And you will look at this cat. The cat is out of place. Here you are. You're supposed to be an African man. A black man from the continent. But you continue to carry your slave master's name. I'm proud to be Derek Grayson. And Grayson means son of gray. It's a German name. Who in your family, Negro, comes from up out of Germany? You don't have no roots in Germany. You have no origins in Germany. And you proud of it. So you continue to spread the name of your former slave master and their children. And you don't do nothing, but you want to talk about I'm black, I'm African American, I'm all this and all that. You are white man. Pink man, excuse me. I'm not going to use white no more. Because you're not holy. You're not righteous. They lies and deceivers and just trying to get over. They don't have no apology. They have no remorse. Well, I didn't do nothing. They'll tell you that real quick. I had nothing to do with this. And you and really you did, but you 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 didn't, but yes, you did. See, first of all, all of America benefit from slavery. The North and the South. The whole country benefit from slavery. Free slave labor made these people rich. Can you imagine if somebody came to your house or came to your business and just gave you free labor? What kind of an advantage would you have? Oh man. See, they want you, they want to play the stupid role with us. See, if they don't like Angel Snub No Seven, because y'all, I'm, I'm not, because you ain't you're not gonna pull that on me. Slavery was a way of life. Jim Crow was a way of life. You denied black people their rights. Denied them jobs and things based on skin color. Y'all like that because it was a benefit to you. Now look at this. Okay, so now. Let's, say, let's use this as a, a quick example. Your father is a bank robber. He robbed banks. Okay, then you take the money and go to college. And in your own right, you build a, a successful business and, and all like that. But how did you get started? How did you pay for that college education? You paid for your schooling. You paid for that college education with stolen money. Yeah, America is great. How did it become great? It became great because you stole the free labor of another people. That's welfare. Welfare is charity that you get from the labor and the work of another people, another person. That's welfare. So how can you talk about all oh, the black people on welfare, of which the majority on welfare is Caucasian or pink people? How can you talk about or try to make mockery of welfare when that's what your country was made from? Is made, it became wealthy and rich, not by the internet, not by Bill Gates, not by the cotton gin. Well, yeah, well, the cotton gin was a tool, but the United States of America became super rich because of free labor for over 300 years. And then once the slaves got free, you underpaid them for another hundred some years. But you won't teach the little black children. So it's up to Angel Snub Dub 7. It's up to us who, who are trying to return back to our original self. It's up to us to show our people and our babies who and what we really are and let them see and expose the lies and the deceit by people who benefit 
from theft, rape, and murder. Because that's what it is. Now the white people say, we all in the same boat. But you never, they always want the black folks to come join them. They never want to come join us where we are in the lead of the struggle. They want us to come there because we, because they are, they see, they still see us as slaves. Now, I want to say this and we're going to bring this to conclusion. Do you ever see Caucasian pink people? Do you see them standing with black folks on issues that mean something to us? Very, very few. You go back to the civil rights movement with Dr. King, it's just a, it's very few. If you go back to slavery, the abolitionists, that's very few. The majority like slavery. The majority like Jim Crow. Black people, we had to fight a lot. We had to fight like hell to get the little stuff that we that we have, and you refuse to teach your children about the struggle so they don't they don't see what you died for. They don't see your death, they don't see your suffering. So here we are in modern times, and we look at the Trayvon Martin case. And I will give credit where credit is due. It was a Caucasian person who put the Trayvon Martin case up into the public view. They are the, it was a Caucasian guy. I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that. So I must give, and we're going to give credit where credit is due. I don't know about anybody else, but if you can tell me and show me where I am in error, I will correct that error because I am about telling the truth, but I'm not going to entertain your deception in your lives. Don't even try to bring that to me. But when you see, or when we've seen all these rallies all over the country, from California to New York, from Chicago all the way down to Louisiana, all these rallies for Trayvon Martin, how many pink people do you see? How many pink people are involved in in the cause that black folks hold so dear to their heart. You don't see too many of them. See, that's, that's how y'all are. You fakes. You fraud. It's all about you. You don't care nothing about what? About somebody else. If Todd Aiken has said legitimate rape and it only was directed to a black woman, they wouldn't say a damn thing. They wouldn't say nothing. Because it's all about how they feel, how it affects them. They don't care nothing about, only about themselves. Then they, but then, when black folks start speaking and telling the truth about it, here they go. Love everybody. It's about everybody. But if you look, the reality is everybody is looking out for themselves. And they don't want you, black man, they don't want you, black woman, to look out for yourself because all these other suckers is leeching off you and me in our neighborhoods. That's why black folks can't get together. And when and because these Negroes have a European mind, they don't even care about their ancestors. They believe success is material things and trying to get as close to massa as they can. Because, see, they have a white mind. So let me try to, a Caucasian mind, pink mind, rather. I, I, I'm going to get out of that. I'm not going to be calling these people white. Because this kind of behavior is not pure. It's not holy. It's not clean. It's not righteous. It's not just. So I cannot call you holy. I cannot call you white people. You have to be pink. You have to be Caucasian. You got to be pale face. And the Native American people also gave the pink pale face people another description. They said, man that speak with forked, forked tongue. Talking in two directions. And that's how they talk to us. Slick. See, I don't care about how you smile. 
I don't care about how you talk. I'm going, I'm judging you on your actions, and your actions speak louder than your words, and I don't see your apology. First of all, I don't hear your apology. Not as a people. Now, there are individual pink people, Caucasian people, they will tell you, I apologize. But see, their individual apology don't mean anything when slavery and Jim Crow was legal. Your government owes the black man and woman an official apology. But that shows you their arrogance. They don't think, they don't have no respect for black people in this country. I ain't going to tell you nothing. I don't owe you no apology. So since I don't owe you no apology, I don't have to show no remorse. I didn't do anything to you. But you are living on land that was worked free of charge by black folks. And I am the descendant of slaves for over 300 some years. And you have given the children of the slave nothing at all. And then when the children of slaves work on their own, and you see them growing and maturing and being successful. You do everything and did everything that you could and still do the same thing today that you can to try to, to keep us down. And you blame the victim because you do it in such a covert manner. You use your media. You know that the black people have white minds. You know they're materialistic. You know they want to get close to you. And you know that they believe everything that the pink people say. You know all this. You know that these black folks have no self-pride. You know they hate themselves. You know you keep liquor and porn and drugs in their neighborhood. You use your media and help them feed each other so the black man will fight the black woman in the Black woman fights the black man and all this nonsense. See, Caucasian people know this. And they sit back and blame us. We don't make guns. But the pink people make sure that we are able to have these guns because they know we're going to kill one another. They know this. We don't. And we fall for the trick because we fill with self-hatred. We think success is a million dollars in their money. See, for me, success is a million dollars with my face on it. Not with their face on it. With my face on it. With your face on it, brothers and sisters. They don't want you to talk like that. What's wrong with George Washington's face? George Washington was a racist. He raped. And they honor their racist forefathers. You don't see no Caucasian people deny George Washington and Patrick Henry and Ben Franklin. They love these people. They were racist, murderers, killers. They proud of them. So how are you going to get justice and how are you going to be friends with people who honor thieves, rapists, and murderers, criminals? You see how they treat Todd Aiken. I don't accept your apology. That was wrong what you said. That's what's wrong what he said. He did not hurt nobody. Just made a dumb comment. But I can't. I, I can't. I don't accept your apology. Resign. I don't want you to be no senator. I'm not going to support you no more, Ted Aiken. See how they are? They... But they want you and I, they want you and me to be different. Because see, they are our problem. That's why. That's why they don't they don't want you to hate. That's why they don't want you to be like them. Because they are the object of your hatred. They will be the object of your dislike. So they want us, black people of America, they want us to be like sheep and docile. Love everybody. While they hate people, while they kill people, drop bombs on folks, lie on folks, and all this other stuff that they do. 
white people, Caucasian people rather, ah, you're not white, you're not white, you're not white. Pink people have never suffered from guilt. They don't owe us nothing. And that's good. I don't want you to owe me nothing. Because I suggest to you and me that we need to separate from these people. Let them go about their business. Take your resources, build ourselves up, and let us get to the point where we can separate and create our own nation. And don't have to be bothered with their image. They act like little children. They act like little children. Violence, violence is the way of children. And that's how they act like little children. These Caucasian people. They solve their problems by bullying people and violence. Cyber stalking, terminating, false flagging. That's them. They childlike in the mind. You got to take these as, as an adult people. You got to move these children out of the way. Otherwise, this world going to continue to get worse and worse. Because you, you don't leave children unattended in a house by themselves. They are children. And until you realize that these Caucasian pink people that's in power, they are children. And you are the adult and become the adult and move them out the way. Until you move these children and get them out of the house, then you'll continue to suffer and be in the situation that we're in. And they know we have the potential to be daddy because we were daddy before. They know who we are. You don't know who we are. We are daddy and mama. They know this. And they're afraid that mama and daddy is about to come home and whoop their ass. <laughs> Woo, thank you for listening. This is your brother Tony Keeping Rob. And uh, thanks for your support. This was, and is, think about it, jot down your comments, the Reality's Temple on Earth.